Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. So here is an exaggerated model of what I'm going to call spline rifling. This is kind of your traditional standard rifling pattern where you've got a series of lands and grooves. And the lands, of course, will uh, dig into the bullet and that interface is what imparts spin to the bullet as it travels down the barrel. In contrast, here are a few models of polygonal rifling, where instead of lands and grooves, you just have flats in the barrel. Uh, in some historical examples, like the Whitworth rifle, you would have uh, a hexagonal bore that required you to shoot a hexagonal bullet, uh, or in some other cases, perhaps an octagonal bore that would require you to shoot an octagonal bullet. Modern day implementations of polygonal rifling uh, either use a very high order polygon or they use a cylindrical bore that just has flats in it at intervals so that you can shoot a normal cylindrical projectile and the bullet will still engage those flats and they'll impart some spin to it. Now, theoretically, the uh, engagement in a polygonal rifle barrel uh, produces a lot less deformation of the bullet, and so because you have less distortion, uh, you have a little bit less friction, giving you higher muzzle velocity, and you have better consistency because you have less distortion of the bullet. Um, in practice, this has its pros and cons. You know, sometimes I've heard of people using polygonal rifle barrels, and especially with like soft lead bullets, uh, they, they've run into problems with keyholing because the, the bullet engagement in the barrel is actually too gentle. You know, the, the flats just don't engage the bullet aggressively enough to spin it up and stabilize it. As well as, polygonal rifling would be rather difficult uh, to produce using a button rifling method. You know, button rifling is a very efficient method of producing rifle barrels, and it's one that is relatively easy to implement at home. Um, but it would be difficult, if not impossible, to produce a truly polygonal rifle barrel using a button rifling process. Now, here's a model of what I'm going to call monoclinic rifling. And this represents sort of a hybrid between polygonal and spline rifling. It has these asymmetric sort of triangular rifling teeth. And so depending on which way the barrel is oriented, depending on which way the bullet goes through the barrel, if it goes through it one way, it'll engage the abrupt edges of these triangular teeth, and uh, the, the teeth will dig into the bullet and make grooves in it and uh, in, you know, spin it just like a uh, spline rifle barrel would. If it goes through the other way, then it's going to be the gradual inclines that uh, interface with the bullet, and so it'll be more of a, a gentle, uh, flat interface, kind of like a polygonal rifle barrel. And yet, this monoclinic pattern is something that I think could be produced using uh, a button rifling method. So my plan in this video is to produce a monoclinic rifling button and a monoclinic rifle barrel, and we'll try it out and see how it works.
Well, here is our completed monoclinic rifled Utah barrel in 45 ACP. Uh, I must say I really like how the rifling turned out, although I must add that the rifling button was quite a bit more difficult to drive through the barrel than my standard uh, spline type rifling buttons. Uh, as you can see, I've cut threads and chambers on both ends of the barrel so that I can fire rounds through it in either direction. Uh, that's going to be necessary for fully testing the monoclinic rifling concept because the rifling will likely behave differently depending on which way the bullet goes through it. Uh, if we fire a round through it this way, then it should engage the hard edge of the rifling and the rifling should spin the bullet just like spline rifling would. Whereas if we shoot it through this way, then the bullet will be engaging the uh, gentle edge on the rifling and so it should behave more like polygonal rifling in this direction. So, at this point, I think we're ready to take it out and test it. Okay, so what I did is first I fired a 10-shot group with full metal jacket ammunition uh, with the barrel, I guess we'll say facing forward, you know, with the uh, barrel oriented such that the bullet will engage the abrupt edge of the rifling, more like a traditional uh, rifling pattern. Uh, and then <clears throat> after I'd fired 10 rounds of full metal jacket, I fired a second 10-shot group using cast lead bullets. And as you can see, uh, both of them were shooting reasonably well, both of them were shooting about the same, and both of them were gr grouping about the same. Uh, then I turned the barrel around, so now the bullet is engaging the gentle flats uh, in the barrel, more like uh, if you had a barrel that had a polygonal rifling system. Uh, and once again I fired a 10-shot group of full metal jacket ammunition, and then a 10-shot group of uh, cast lead bullets and once again they're both shooting pretty well and they're both grouping about the same. I don't see any key holding anywhere on these targets so uh, clearly the rifling is uh, stabilizing the bullets. Um, this type of rifling definitely works in both directions. Does it work better than anything else? Well I don't really have data to say that at this point, uh, but it was certainly an interesting experiment nonetheless. So, until next time, thanks for watching the Idahoan Show.